things that happened, you know, when she began to work for Mr. Bauer and all these sorts of things. But the, um, the emotional, relational sorts of things are more speculative, things that I couldn't actually document through family stories or other, other uh, you know, research. I, I fictionalized. What was the uh, inspiration for you behind your grandmother? I, it, I mean, I don't want to, it, it's kind of saucy a little bit. I mean, a, she's a teenager yes, when, yes. when she starts working for Mr. Right. Bar in a dark room. I mean, kind of a dark room with yes. a married man. Married a man. This is, uh, you know. She became infatuated. Yeah, yeah. Well, not that. You know, these are not, uh, these are not, uh, these are not uh, steamy romance. Right, right. right. It's, it's, uh, you can have your children read this book. Mm -hmm. Let's put it that way. Okay, well, let's go back to uh, what was the well, for me, the man world plot, I guess. Um, I had always heard the story that she was trained both to run studios, um, to run studios, the artistic and the business side, because a lot of she had seven, okay. and her older sister lived. Pleasure of chatting with our next guest around the release of her last book, A Flickering Light. Author Jane Kirkpatrick has been busy since writing her latest historical fiction novel, An Absence So Great. And this morning, we are very happy to have Jane back on the show to tell us more. Hello, Jane. Hi, Great to see you again. Thank we were just talking. You had a signing last night. Yes. And you said 60 people showed up. That's great because you're, you're really known in the Pacific Northwest where you live, but uh, you're picking up steam here. Yeah in the Twin Cities. That's great. Yeah. Uh, well, talk about your book signing a little bit. How do you like meeting your fans? And, and when you see the, the base growing like that, that's going to make you feel pretty good. It is great. And this is at Winona, the Winona History Center. Mm -hmm. And that's where the stories primarily take place, although the second book has some, some Minneapolis connection. Um, but it's it's great to have people who sort of connect to their own history and, uh, and you know, make a story that's uh, from the past be relevant contemporarily too. Right. Well, let's uh, pick the viewers up to speed here about the book. A Flickering Light was the first one, and An Absence So Great picks up on that. Kind of fill us in what it's, it's about your grandmother. It's a historical fiction. Right. So there, there are some true stories in there as right. well as one, ones that right. you uh, create. Uh, talk about the, the uh, series a little well, bit. She, um, she, my grandmother was a photographer, one of the early photographers at the mm -hmm. turn of the century, and uh, was employed by a gentleman, Fred Bauer, who owned a studio in Monona, and it was a um, very competitive business and women really weren't allowed to even take the photography classes mm -hmm. because it was considered too dangerous and she was trained to run studios when the photographers would often get mercury poisoning and have to be away from the studio. Now did that really happen? Oh yeah that happened a lot. Very and, very common. And a lot of men died and so then she she would go in and take over both the artistic and the business side uh, to, to help the widow until the widow figured out what she wanted to do with the studio. Well this is your 19th book. This is, the, is. the second in this series. I plates, all the uh, photographic glass plates that were, when she died, there were all these, all the grandkids got these glass plates and they were fascinating. And one of them was a photograph of her in a dress, um, mm -hmm. and it actually, this, it's this that one. Right here. And she had told me about that picture. She didn't like pictures of herself, but she loved that one. And she said, uh, my mother called that my kept woman dress, and it was no such thing I spent, I saved 25 cents a week for six months to buy that dress. Wow. So she cared deeply about that, and she was really distressed that that would be perceived as, you know, that there was some sort of stress in the family, and that kind of intrigued me. I mean, a good story has a secret that you're trying to uncover. It all starts with that. Well, yes. you brought a couple pictures here. I'll did, reach yeah. over and pardon my manner here, no, and I'll hold right. this one up because this is an actual photograph of her studio. Of the studio that she worked in, yes, before she got her own studio. Are yes. these pictures in, uh, in, there, in the that book? One, those are not in the book. There are several photographs that were used in the book of different um, glass plates that she'd taken, but this one's not in there, so that's, it's the studio, it's pretty classy looking for Well, I was going to say, when, when, you think, yes, when you think of a turn-of-the-century a, turn uh, a photography studio, you don't think, this looks like a parlor from a mansion. It does, it's it does. It's absolutely beautiful. You brought one more picture, why don't you hand it to me, I'll share a, this, this with the viewers. This is Mr. Bauer, because a lot of people have written, a lot of uh, readers have said, well, what does Mr. Bauer look like? So this is Mr. Bauer, probably around 19... 
seven, nineteen eight, um, and he ran the ran the studio in Winona, and then later they moved to Minneapolis and had a studio here in Garfield Avenue for a number of years. Who would you say your target audience, your target readership? Uh, who are they? And well, who do you I, meet your fans. With? I think it's mostly women, uh, people who are interested in history. But at the at the event last night, there were probably as many men as women. Is that right? And one of the men in the back said, you know, I emailed you and told you that when I read your books, it's like uh, reading music. Wow, what a and great so compliment. It was a nice compliment. That's a very good compliment. So, well, we've got some breaking news for your books because you told me in the green room with this story, this is this is, this it, is it. Because, yeah. I mean, really, I I asked you the question, like, okay, this is based on your grandmother. you got to start running out of stories eventually, soon, right? I mean, yes, but I want to be invited back to the family reunion, <laughs> yeah. so I'm not going to go any further. That's the real reason. <laughs> yeah. Jane, thank you so much. Thank Congratulations thank on the book. Much. And keep writing. Thank wonderful you, stories. Audrey. Wonderful thank stories. You, you bet. Jane is hosting two book signings tomorrow. The first is at 1 p.m. at the Northwestern Bookstore in Burnsville. The second is at 7 p.m. at the Barnes and Noble in the Har Mar Mall in Roseville. You can find Jane Kirkpatrick's latest book, An Absence So Great, in bookstores everywhere. of herself. She was kind of critical. She was a really beautiful woman. She uh, she had she took very good care of herself. She always dressed well. And um, my aunt, when we were talking, she said she would never go anywhere without stockings. I mean, the idea that people would go in public without stockings was just unheard of. Um, she wore a, had a whale bone a whale bone corset that she wore most of her life. And the only time I ever saw her not in that was when she went to pick blackberries with us on our farm in Wisconsin. She had to put jeans on, and she took this thing off and set it by itself. I'd never seen anything like it in my life. <laughs>